Oiga, señor, we are federales. You know, the mountain police. If you're the police, where are your badges? Badges? We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. Always ask for badges. You never know who you're talking to. In a daily basis, you probably receive lots of phone calls, emails, text messages from people promising to solve all your problems, don't you? That's why I believe that this short movie clip that I just showed in the beginning of the video, it makes sense because you need to check who are your partners and um, what are their qualifications, skills, credibility in the market, right? For decades, three major IT infrastructure components are, believe it or not, still arguing to each other in a very peaceful way to find out who is the fastest component and who is the bottleneck. And sometimes even the application teams come to play. This is an endless discussion, but only if you don't have the right tools for the duty. One thing that you might not know about me is that I am an expert in dealing with critical situations. I have been even awarded with a badge about it. Yeah. No, not this one. This one, yeah. Anyway, I like to step up the game when regards to performance troubleshooting. So I believe that if you're going to a war, you need to be prepared. Why do I say war? Because when bad things happen and critical problems are in place, the pressure is on and we don't have a friendly environment around us, do we? So after decades working with IT infrastructure, almost three, uh, I, have, I had developed a framework to guide initially myself when a critical situation happens in the client environment um, and how to deal with it. The framework is called MTPGA. What does that mean? Make the pain go away. It's not a rocket science, neither a secret uh, pattern. It's just a group of techniques that I put it together throughout the years and which helped me identify with a very good accuracy where the problem is and how to address it if possible. It's working like a charm. So let me share with you. It's very, very simple. It, it's a pyramid. Um, maybe a triangle, um, uh, a trilogy. Um. There are three main areas, process, tools, and knowledge about the environment. Things get clear when we have a plan to follow, agree? Right? You don't need to invent anything new. Just run um, some flavor of plan, do, study, act, cycle process with the following questions in your mind. First one, define the problem. Where are the dimensions of the problem? Frequency, intensity, how serious it is, who is involved? What had changed before feeling the symptoms? Are we clear about the desired outcome? What improvements would be considered sufficient? What is our best guess hypothesis about what might work and why? Fourth question, what data will be collected and analyzed to indicate that? After you run that, you need to ask to yourself, did the hypothesis was asserted? I mean, did it bring some different results? From there, you can have basically two status. Problem solve it, embed the solution into training and coaching routine, so put to operations, and problem not solve it. Make a new plan with a service coordinator, input and try it again. Double check if the solution is viable and accepted by all the stakeholders and be proactive working towards avoiding that problems like this happen again in the future. Just a tip here. Try not to deploy several hypotheses at the same time or you will not know what actually solved the problem. 
A bit of knowledge on how the environment works can speed up the troubleshooting process. Gathering qualitative information about the environment can assist in defining what performance is required and when is required. A few examples. What kind of application are we talking about? Is it throughput oriented or service time oriented? Is it backup or batch report? Uh, or maybe an OLTP normal application? Are we uh, using any sort of uh, replication between the sites? If yes, how's the link? Do we monitor the link as well? Uh, when the problem is actually happening during the night, during the day, during the weekends? Is there any sort of data reduction in place? Is there any new workload uh, running in the system? Um, temporary versus long term. Do you want me to fix this for now or let's pick the chance and re architecture the whole thing? And as important as the qualitative, some quantitative data will help too. Uh, a few questions. What is the expected performance for the system? What is the maximum response time that you uh, think it is okay? And uh, what is the minimum throughput that the solution needs to deliver? Last but not least, our secret weapon, tools. I heard some very famous quotes a few days ago, something like, give us the tools and we will finish the job. Well, now it's time where it all comes together. Using IBM Spectrum Control to answer the questions stated in the previous steps will accelerate your troubleshooting process. And, as I said before, in the beginning of this video series, I hope that I can give you some small tips but with big impact in your daily tasks, okay? So I will make it easier for you and uh, instead of describing, I'm going to show you in this short demo some key metrics that are really useful when troubleshooting performance of the storage system using IBM Spectrum Control. Stay tuned. So jumping straight to my preferred metrics while doing a performance troubleshooting, uh, they are not the only one, but um, they are easy to f uh, discover if something is happening with a particular um, storage system. So let's select the storage system and um, I will highlight here four main groups, the volumes, the pools, manager disks and drives. Uh, we are talking about an SVC in this case. Um, so it's, it's, it's recommended to investigate in all these layers, right? The first layer that we're going to investigate is the volume based. And as you can see, uh, you have performance and capacity. Um, as we are troubleshooting performance, click on performance. Uh, in order to not have a polluted graph chart, uh, I will select just one resource here, okay? The first metric is the total rate and the overall response time. They're quite good to see if the machine is busy or not, but not as good um, when regards to troubleshoots. So let's change this metric for instance. So let's clear them. And for example, uh, I'm worried about reads in my storage system. So take a look on reads for the IO rate perspective and the response time perspective. So what will uh, uh, the spectrum control will give to me is a chart uh, of the IO rate for reads and the response time for reads uh, for the for the respective uh, moments in time. Okay, and uh, that's a good starting point. Uh, if you see that something's happen happening, uh, it will highlight here very easily. Uh, one comment: uh, if you have a, a spike uh, of uh, uh, of response time three or four times a day that not necessarily means that you are having a performance problem there might be just some random workload that your applications are, um, are running okay um, uh, and a good way of analyzing it is uh, uh, for example if it is a batch report right so just change it the io rate for data rates you will see the megabytes per second that that application is doing for that environment in a specific point in time. So that's also a good way of starting um, troubleshooting it, uh, your performance. Uh, let's move on. So let's clear here and 
uh, check the overall host attributed response time percentage. This is really cool metric because it gives uh, um, how uh, how long does the storage needs to wait until the host to come back. So it is a delay uh, related to the host attributed uh, uh, stuff. So a normal uh, um, number would be around from from 10 to 20. So that means that uh, 10 or 20 percent of the time uh, the storage is waiting for for the host. And uh, if I have high numbers, just like this spike here, but all the time that tells me that um, the host is not being able to to send or receive data properly. So it's struggling to do that. So it's a, like a slow drain, right? So moving on. So let's change this matrix, for instance, now and clear again. And uh, for example, you have an asynchronous mirror between site A and B. So you are using global mirror. So a very cool metric to take a look on. Uh, um, this system doesn't have replication, so I, I will not click on save. So we are not going to send uh, see any data. Uh, but what this metric tells you is uh, how long the write is being uh, actually uh, written in the secondary site. Even uh, even we are talking about uh, the global mirror, it will tell us. Uh, how long it uh, is taking to do that? Um, a number bigger than 500 milliseconds uh, might tell us that we are having problems with the link. So we need to investigate what the link is capable of delivering for this. Okay. So let's clear this again and um, let's go to the volume cache total delay or this stage and this stage response time. So basically what we are uh, looking at here is the time in, in the case of the this stage, of course, is the time taking to write from the lower cache to the disk and the this stage is basically the time taking to read from the disk to the lower cache. So that's also very good metrics to take a look um, on the volume uh, layer and that will tell you how busy the cache is and or how busy uh, the backend is because again we are um, analyzing and investigating uh, some possible issue that is impacting the performance of the storage right so that's that's why we are looking after these type of metrics uh, another cool metric uh, cache hits uh, for example read cache hit uh, well, cache hit means uh, when uh, when the I/O uh, hits the cache for a read or write operation. In this case, for reads, of course. Um, so that will tell us the efficiency of the cache of handling that uh, work particular workload. So lower read cache hits means that uh, we are skipping the cache, we are missing the cache, and uh, we are. Uh, counting on the backend, and uh, and that's where sometimes we see uh, high latency on the systems, right? Because uh, uh, if if there is not enough cash, uh, it will go to the backend, and if the backend um, is not fast enough, uh, then we will see high latency. So take a look on this metric here, and then on the same time, uh, take a look this metric here so you will see that on the lower uh, um, cache hit um, you will have a high uh, latency here it's not as high as this one here but as you can see that sometimes there is a correlationship between the two right so this is kind of close uh, the volume part so let's go to the pools part so before we jump to the pools uh, perspective, um, one more metric that I like to take a look on is the transfer size, which tells me how big is the I/O, right? So if you click on read and write, that will tell us 
how big they are for the reads and writes operation. Bigger the block is, more difficult to handle, of course. Smaller the block is, easier to handle. So moving forward, a uh, pose perspective. So click on performance, select a specific pose that you are uh, that you're keen to investigate and select the metrics as well. Uh, the same case um, for from the volume one. So select one operation per time and then you can take a look on that in the chart. Um, this is a very uh, good uh, place to start you can, because you can easily uh, see a comparative from the front end coming from the volumes and the back end which is basically the M-Disk performance. So let's take a look on the M-Disk performance for instance. So in this system here we have several M-Disks which is the rate groups right and uh, as the as we saw in the volume view, we have also as a default metric the total backend IR rate this time and overall backend response time, where in the volume view we only have the total IR rates. So, very interesting metric here that I'd like to see is the Kiwi time for reads and writes. So, that's basically the time that the IO waits until it's being issued to the backend for reads or writes. And there you go. Those are my favorite metrics. Um, again, they are not the only ones, but um, with, with those metrics, you can do lots of things when you are trying to find out what is happening with your storage system from the performance point of view. That was it. I hope you have enjoyed. Leave your comments and feedback. I would love to hear from you. This was the last session that I have planned on Spectrum Control and Storage Insights. But feel free to reach me out and ask for more demos about these solutions, okay? I have no issues at all to return to this topic and do my suggestions if required. See you next week. Kia kaha, matawa, cheers, bye.